Welcome to the podcast. Podcast. Bienvenue. I knew I didn't see. I thought bienvenue sounds poncy. Aquaba sounds good. Who are they? Aquabe. 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 In this state, I've become really successful, right? Uh, but I haven't done any live comedy for about ten years. I've sort of retreated. Yeah, no, it's not about comedy. This isn't about comedy. Um, and I, and then after, but after about ten years, I hear that a woman that I've loved all my life, and it's different each time I imagine it. It's a different person because it, it's whoever I'm obsessed with at the time uh, is dying. Gabby Roslin. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that she's dying, right. and I put on a gig. Uh, it's my first gig in ten years, and it's this. It's a, It's like it's everything's always, a reunion. It's always, yeah, I know. I'm obsessed with reunions. I put on a gig. It's massive. Mm. It's at the O2 or something because it's the first time I've done it in ten years, and I'm massive. Uh, and everybody turns out, packed out to see this show, mm. and they think it's my last one. And then I turn up, and right at the beginning, I just say, "I'm not doing stand up tonight." And there's this sort of hushed silence, and there's just a, there's a grand piano on stage, nothing else. I just oh. sit down. And I play <laughs> about three hours of like the tenderest love songs I know, and then right at the end I just say this was for, and then oh I say, and then Mandy. I say her name. <laughs> I do Barry Manilow. <laughs> I do. Uh, I do. Yeah. Oh, I do when the baby. <laughs> what, what, I do my baby. I'm like a bird by Nelly Furtado. I do them all. I go. <laughs> I do them. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Sister Sledge cover I'm doing now. <laughs> Mr. Randy Newman. <laughs> I go through the Great American Songbook and I play... We love it! <laughs> no, 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 no. And then later that night I find I find out she's died. Oh. But I like to think... But I think she... I think she reads... She hears about it on the news On the way to the wrong gig. <laughs> no, she's in hospital. Mm. She's dying at the time. And oh, I think, right. like, there'll be a live broadcast. I think there's a live broadcast and she sees it on her hospital. Oh, did you know when you said that? I just imagined, like, it's the Hammersmith Apollo. It's you on the... I just imagined it's you on the piano playing <laughs> on the way to Rio. Da, da. And for some reason, I imagine Randy Newman on the guitar accompanying it. And then just above it is this big screen of this woman with, like, tubes coming out of those. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine being in the audience for that for three hours. <laughs> you just like she, it's every she, now and she, then you, it's like comic relief. And you just go <laughs> jacking her progress. It's been baby. Wah, she wah. actually flatlines. You put the line in the coconut. She's flat. <laughs> she, so she dies about an hour and a half through, yeah, and the entire the crowd, see, the entire go crowd on. sees her and I go I've prepared three hours for this woman I will do no less <laughs> it's what she would have wanted <laughs> while you're, while you're this is you're, the girl from Ipanema <laughs> Randy Newman on guitar <laughs> Randy Newman doesn't Miss, even Miss, play guitar. Mr. Mick... I know, that's what it's funny. <laughs> He's wearing a Hawaiian shirt as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mick Hucknall. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just... She's been... The zip's going up on her body. <laughs> <laughs> and it was always going to finish with... It was, it was always going to finish with The Dogs and the Horses by The Divine Comedy, oh. which is a song about saying goodbye to a loved one. And that, that, and that I, I think about that all the time. <laughs> I put I would, myself I would in love to see that gig. It's just like, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Peter Gabriel. <laughs> and he comes he's sledgehammer. He's sledgehammer. Oh, but this, I don't know if I imagine this, but I, I don't think I did. I think it was, uh, he was doing a gig Peter where Gabriel. he was on a Segway, <laughs> right? Um, and he's doing sledgehammer. And as he's singing, sle- <laughs> he's going... Just doing up and down the stage on the Segway. Mm. I wanna be, duh, and then he'd turn around, <laughs> sledgehammer, and go the other way, which is the most smug way to perform that song. I wanna be, the other way, sledgehammer. <laughs> I, a while ago, you know, the, you know those posters about undeclared income that HMRC put. Peter up? Gabriel comes out in a Segway. <laughs> on a Segway. He got fucking Mick Hucknall on a Sinclair C5. <laughs> Pretending I, to row. A while ago, <laughs> HMRC did um, some some of those we're, we're closing down on undeclared income posters. You know the ones where it's a big grey poster and there's a hole in the middle and someone's eyes looking through and it says, declare your tax. 
we okay. are closing anyway. And I couldn't take them seriously. Like, I declared self-employed in August, so I need to do it next year. Uh, and I couldn't take this poster seriously because it looked... The eyes were exactly the eyes of Peter Gabriel in the Sledgehammer video. And I, it, like, I didn't find it threatening. Well, I just thought, like... The, what a way to negotiate the world. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea, see that? And you just... I, I, uh, all I can see was the Sledgehammer. <laughs> all I could see was Peter Gabriel in the well, Sledgehammer Well, my favourite... Like, to be honest, I welcomed the idea of him coming to discuss my tax. I thought that I, 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 thought do, that I, I, great. I know. I would love to sit and Please. chat about my tax with Peter Gabriel. I'd, I'd love. Two favourite posters I ever saw on the tube. One was there was a film called out Jumper. Yeah, I remember that. I didn't see it, but I remember um, that film. That was Hayden Christensen. What was yeah. that? And it's called Jumper. And the poster said like, uh, if you were a jumper, you wouldn't need to catch a train. And I just saw that, and I did, or something like that, and I didn't know about the film. If you were and I'm just looking at that, I was like, what is that an advert for? I didn't know what it was at. I was, I was looking at that, going, if you were a jumper, you wouldn't need to train. And I, the thing is, they must, the have is, known, like, even if, they must have known when they chose that title, surely. That, like, that, that, that is a word. I don't know, there was a film called The Last Airbender. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, there's that. Right. But there's also there was these ones about advertising for the Times, and there's one of like I think it was Katie Price on the horse car. I remember. Yeah. But there's one of a fat ginger kid with his top off, <laughs> and he's looking miserable. <laughs> and I remember looking at that guy. His par- he's going to really thank his parents someday. <laughs> 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 That's the beginning of his portfolio. <laughs> it's just it's the Times, and in the middle it's just him looking miserable with his top off, ginger kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I said, like, if you were a jumper, you wouldn't. Need to <laughs> if train. you were a jumper, you wouldn't like, need to get straight. But it's true. Whichever way you look at it, that's well, it depends who's wearing yeah, it. Yeah, depends yeah, who's I wearing mean, it's, it's not wrong. Bob was telling me last night about some guy from Holland stalked the woman, the blonde in ABBA. Right. And would just. Is she the Nazi it? baby? Or is that the other one? Because one of them's a Nazi baby and hasn't been seen in decades. <laughs> Doesn't matter, go on. <laughs> It comes up in the concert. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and ge- she hasn't been seen in 50 years. <laughs> Goose Please stepping welcome. all the way from obscurity. <laughs> I can't remember her name. I can't remember any of their names. No, I remember One the was called Anna. Benny Bjorn, Anna. Another Ingrid. A. No, it's an, it's an A, isn't it? Because it's Ang- Anna. Angrid. Angrid. <laughs> Astrid. 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 It could well be Astrid. That's sort of up Swedish, isn't it? Asterix. Goose stepping all the oh, way from Why did I say Ingrid? That's Asterix retarded. Because Ibba. Ibba. <laughs> Abby. Abby. <laughs> but, it, no. Anna, Bjorn, Benny. Uh, uh, Anna. <laughs> Text in with your suggestions. Do you know what? I'm being taken underwear shopping today. Are you? By, uh, yeah, but I'm just watching her buy underwear. Really? That's what friends are for, isn't it? Yeah. I was, someone said to me that uh, in the week, accused me of saying, do you ever have female friends you don't sleep with and I've got these two women in their late 30s yeah. who I'm very good friends with fellowship <laughs> fellowship I have with them one of them's taking me underwear shopping I'm just going to watch it by and it was her suggestion wait how's your underwear supply doing but to it's, you? Uh, that, I, I've Said much worse than that. Yeah, no, I think, right. uh, like, it's this is <laughs> I, the thing is, I do have female friends, but they, they're very tolerant because even if I don't make a move of them, I still mm. say horrendous shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have quite a it lot just, of female friends. It just comes, friends with, that the, I don't, um, uh, just comes I, with the territory. I have quite a lot of female friends that I, uh, I don't. Just comes uh, with the territory. What? That's why. <laughs> no me, no my ways. <laughs> How was your underwear drawer? Uh, well, most of the stuff I listen to, most of the music I listen to. But you don't like Bobby McFerrin? No, I just don't like that. I don't like the songs he wrote. Uh, okay. I like. Uh, I thought his version of Blackbird is very oh, I've not nice. Heard that. Don't worry, be happy. He wrote that. Yeah, I love it. That's a beautiful. What's song. a war film without that playing over? <laughs> you know, the final sequence. The <laughs> <laughs> platoon would have been such a... Well, not no, not even over the final sequence. Like the film ends in silence, and then that just ladies plays, and that gentlemen, just plays over the rolling Bobby credits. Bobby McFerrin. 
with her on the on the life link. <laughs> this, she, she's the at the mortuary. She's like they're doing an autopsy. <laughs> doing this doing this the autopsy. They, they, Ladies and gentlemen, to finish Bob- things off, <laughs> Mr. Bobby Mc. <laughs> Here's a little the song, song I wrote. You might want to sing it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, no, no. He's doing work. he's doing audience work. Yeah. Right, you're the left side. You're the you're the red team. <laughs> you're the blue right side. You're the blue team. All our organs have been taken out <laughs> by this point. Right, the left side. I'm gonna just get real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in the back. I'm just in the back playing like Freddie Mercury. Bit of ball. I'm just playing arpeggios He's on the, the piano. He's the only guy done... that could have done that, other than Freddie Mercury, Bobby McFerrin, <laughs> at live it. Bitty body ball. I, I saw Teich van Leer do it a few weeks ago. What? I saw Teich van Leer do that a few weeks ago. I went to see Focus live in uh, Islington, in Islington Assembly Hall, and they, they were great. They played all their songs. What was Ho- then... Focus's big song? Hocus Pocus. Yeah, I was thinking. I think it was on the Monsters of Rock album. They're great. Anyway, he did this long sort of middle bit where he just came out on front. He's huge now. He looks like Jabba the Hutt. Uh, and he comes out out yeah. front, but with a leather cap, uh, which is an image. Mm. And then he he j- he did little kind of um, improvised bit, call and response. So he'd go deedle deedle da pop, and then the whole room would go deedle deedle da pop. And he did that for 15 minutes, and it got tiresome actually. <laughs> and but after 10 minutes, I went play Sylvia, and then he was like five more minutes. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I've <laughs> earned this, young man. And then five minutes later, he went and played. Uh, he went and played <laughs> he does it. He's playing. He's playing along to the drums. It's this little routine where they've got. <laughs> There's a ten-minute drum solo. The thing is, oh, Focus no, are great. I love that. Focus. I love Focus, and I think they're great. But they played eight songs, right? And it lasted two hours. And most of them were extended improv solos and jams. And I thought, you could cut all the jams and do five more songs. They didn't play Rock and Rio, which I love. I mean, now I'm just getting geeky. But, you know... No, I'm just thinking I completely... Indul- indulgence only goes so far before it becomes... No, virtuosity only goes so far before it becomes indulgence. I was going to say indulgence only goes so far before it, it becomes, becomes virtuosity. virtuosity. But that's the opposite of what I mean. Yeah. Anyway... They were good. I saw John Martin. Really? Live. Solid Air. Solid Air. Wait, he was, was that him? Yeah. 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 yeah he's yeah, dedicated yeah. Nick Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I ever make a documentary, it's going to be about Nick Drake. I thought you were going to do it about Desiree Dubonnet. It's very true. If I, one of those is either be about Nick Drake or this <laughs> transsexual singer in Hungary. Yeah. It's going to be Do both. Find a, find a link and just do a documentary about them both. I, do you know what? I'd like to think I'm the only person in the middle of that Venn diagram. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a carnival for the first time last year, and I basically some friends of mine were going, and they invited me. And I remember when I was about 16, I went with my mum to Portobello Road Market, mm. and I remember it being quite busy because it was a Saturday, and there were a lot of stalls, and, and there were a lot of antiques, and there were a lot of nice, like you know, nice food and all that kind of thing. I think I came away from that thinking that that was the Notting Hill Carnival. <laughs> <laughs> Because I remember it was, it was in the area. It was in the area. It was busy. There was a lot going on. I loved it. I had a great time. So last year, some friends of mine went. We're going to the Notting Hill Carnival. Would you like to come? I said I'd be delighted. I loved it last time. I'd be delighted. And then they said, they said, <laughs> we're all, delighted. we're all getting some e. Do you want any? And I went, um, I, no, I don't think that's appropriate. Do you for know, the Notting do you know me? <laughs> I said, uh, I said no, because I, again, I was remembering it as a street market, right? So I was like. Take E at street market. Are you imagining bed knobs and broomsticks? That's what I think of with Portobello Road. Yeah, I, Portobello but I. But, but Road. anyway, so I turned up. I turned up right. Just really. And the guy who does the body thing, and the kids <laughs> love it. You know, the guy who does like the body thing. I've not seen it. It's like it's the funny I've mirrors. Seen. But I, I turned up basically. They can't. Ready. They they can't hear what I'm doing. But I'm basically doing the guy who does the the, the snake body thing. Does the body? Kicks his leg out. <laughs> kicks his leg out, and the kids love it. But I, I. That's but that's that's what that was before stand up comedy, before <laughs> Beatles. We had <laughs> yeah, I back in those days. Was that Beatles. was that entertainment? That was like the seventies. Was that entertainment? This guy doing the snake thing. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> and the kids loved it. But, but I, you thought uh, so? I, I got there. Road strip I got there was expecting like a street, like an antique market, and we were going to browse around a market, and there'd be a bit of live music, maybe. Uh, and I, got, I was walking down the road from from a nearby tube because it said, "Don't go to Notting Hill 
station, it'll be too busy. So I went to another one, I was walking down the road, and I just started hearing this, like, thudding. And I thought, that's weird. It's just like the that? beginning of Jurassic Park. And then... And <laughs> 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 I, 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 I rounded a corner, and I saw a guy screaming at a woman, and then he smashed her head against a wall. And then I thought, oh, that's not what I want to see when I'm going on market. And then I, <laughs> Wait, what? This when man, I'm going on market? When I'm going, when I'm going to market, I don't want to see a man smashing a woman's head against a wall. So I, che- I said, are you OK? <laughs> the guy ran off. I said, are you OK? She went, yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's the carnival. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> OK. And I was like, wow, this carnival's changed since last time I was here. And then I, I kept going. And then, and then there was just one corner where I turned, and there was a million people fighting. And it was their fights just, break out. And it, it was carnival. horrible. Just, like I haven't been to the last. I saw a woman being. I saw August, a woman being restrained by police, so just screaming. Her, and like basically, it looked like a friend of mine who, who wasn't enjoying it either said, "It's you know those films where a meteor's coming, and everyone just abandons hope. You know, have you seen those films where they just, and then they just sort of revel in the streets and there's mm. shit everywhere. That's what it looks like. It looks like the world's ended." It looks like the day after the world's ended and people have just given up. And I saw a sign on a door. Shit's everywhere. I saw a sign on a door that said, because there were these portaloos, piss pouring out of them. All like the street was flooded. Like the port-a-loos. shining. Yeah, and and I saw. I went past a flat and on the door, the open door into this flat full of drunken revelers. Uh, and on the front <laughs> drunken <laughs> revelers who have been a roving. <laughs> on the front door, there was a sign that said, "Clean toilet, five pounds for use." And my faith in people just left me. And then we all went back to the flat for jerk chicken. And I said, guys, jerk chicken, I'm going it's on. It's funny, I look, the jerk chicken. It's overpriced. Really, so it's, it's eight pounds for a lump of jerk chicken. Like jerk, oh, see, even that. Very the, 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 the gay chicken was... Uh, the gay <laughs> chicken. <laughs> was, it was a bit of jerk chicken and some just... It wasn't even... It was shit rice. It was just shit rice. It was just... Jerk chicken yeah, it was just rice. yellow well, I've got rice. It was oily chicken. rice. I quite like jerk chicken, but, like, eight quid, and people were having a lovely time, and it was just... It's just a fight. That's just more the biggest expensive fight. than Nando's. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It's more expensive than... No, I... <laughs> that's the last... That's no, 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 no. So no, imagine if no. we finished on that. No, that's no, more expensive um, than Nando's. I'll t- <laughs> Outro. Uh, I'll tell you... That, right. Thanks for listening. My... Um, do you remember at you can you can see like these Red Bull cars where it's basically you can get a car for free if you go around driving a Red Bull car, right? Like it's got a can of Red Bull on it. Do you get a Red Bull with that? I don't know. I'm sure there's a bumper pack, <laughs> literally a bumper pack <laughs> that comes with it. Yeah, but my mate at uni said oh, I've got a car. I went, oh that's cool. I went, how'd you get the car? He said. Well, it's like a conditional car. I went, all right, he says, I've got to advertise for it. So I just thought, it, I, don't, I don't know what I imagined, but I didn't imagine this Red Bull car, right? Mm. And we went to a festival in this Red Bull car, right? And... <laughs> no, I don't know, is, I don't know what tense. I'm... No, I, but basically, people thought we were selling Red Bull. So we used to get, we we would, because our tent was about twenty feet from the car, like some just by some mad thing. There was like the fence that had the car park, yeah. And then our tent was right near the car, and for some reason people thought that w- that car was selling Red Bull. <laughs> so all weekend, because we, we got to this festival and we're like, what are we doing? We hate this music. It's awful. <laughs> What, what festival was it? It was like Muse were headlining, right? Yeah. And I went for Muse were headlining, and, I, and I, I went and saw Five Minutes, and I thought, oh, yeah, this is very visually spectacular, but I never want to see young people again, <laughs> right? And so we come back to the tent, and literally, we're just, we're just hanging out of the tent, but we couldn't because there was always, at least, there was always ten people <laughs> by, this, by where our buy tent Red was, Bull. trying to buy a Red Bull, but they were fucks. It was like people who were f- who had who had lost all their reasoning faculties. So, for the whole weekend, we're at our tent, right? Constantly telling people, "No, we're not selling Red Bull." <laughs> right? There was, oh, and it was what was weird is you know I said like you know the birds. I yeah. said like oh, when I lost my mind in the drugs yeah, earlier. Yeah. I don't know if it's in this book, but. I said, it was one bird, and then it's two birds. And, two. and, three birds. and it was like the birds, but, but with, with, this, with, with the Red Bull car, right? <laughs> and at first, there was this one guy uh, called... Uh, the guy in the tent next to us was called Malcolm. And 
<laughs> but this guy that came round was like we, he was like a drugged up version of Malcolm, so we called him Extreme Malcolm. And he was, the, and uh, <laughs> he came and he was basic. We just saw him. We were just we were just talking about like you know talking about life, and then we saw him. and He was just. It looked like he was having a hard time with it because he had his hands on the fence, like his fingers clawing at the the fence. Yeah. And uh, he was there for like a good hour. <laughs> Right, and he was just, and we thought he was either dry retching or whatever, or he was just having a bad time. And then we went, "Oi, Extreme Malcolm!" <laughs> and he turned around and he went, "What?" And he went, and he said, to, "He said, when are they getting back? <laughs> when are you get what? When are you get when are the when are the Red Red Bull people getting back?" <laughs> and he went, "That's our car." Oh, <laughs> I feel silly. Uh, <laughs> how? Much as the Red Bull, <laughs> right? But no, we're not. That's just it's a car, mate. We're not selling Red Bull. We're at the festival, uh, just you know, talking about life. And it's like, ah, oh, all right then. Uh, when's how's Red Bull? Like you know, it's, so he, he didn't process it. And then we thought we finally convinced him. About an hour later, he brought people back with him, saying, Le- "Yeah, this is where you get the Red Bull, <laughs> right?" And that for the whole festival. I don't know why I'm bit. telling this story. It's a really shit story. <laughs> but the, basically, for three days straight, we didn't go into the music thing unless we like because we because we hated everyone. Yeah, we didn't go. So we just stayed at our tent, religious, like Watching dogmatically, people. right? But const- like honestly, f- four or five off. people at least an hour for three days. Ex- trying to reason with have you tried to reason with a drunken man? Reasoning with them, explaining to them. You're We're not, not selling, selling Red Bull. Red Bull. <laughs> and we went to this festival really happy, right? Yeah. How did you leave? On the way back, there was... Because uh, we were driving back. We didn't talk to each other. <laughs> 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 we didn't t- and that's so weird. The drive back was about... Uh, oh, was four, three hours, something like that. Not one word was said between us, right? And then we get back to uh, uni... And I'd get my bag out. And we nodded at each other, right? <laughs> and we were best mates. We nodded at each other. And we didn't, we didn't speak until the next year of the university. <laughs> and it was, this was the weirdest... Because th- of that? Yeah, I haven't thought about this in years. <laughs> but that is the weirdest way to, like... Because we were, like, brothers... Then, well, uh, we thought we were. <laughs> and then we had this Red Bull Festival weekend where we were just constantly... Yeah, it. exp- it, it's, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just... A, it's funny what can get between friends. Like, sometimes it's a woman. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's literally 300 drunk people <laughs> trying to buy trying Red to Bull. Buy Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, it completely <laughs> fucked us up. Back when... You know when they were the, t- they were the terrorists? When... Wa- was there was there a, like an English flight that was bombed or something? What, 9/11? You think? No, 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 no. It was it was like it was in the aftermath. Lockerbie. Of, I can't remember. Basically, there was a what year. Think, it would have been. About? What year are you talking about? It was around 2005, and there was like I mean, obviously everything got worse on flights. Are you talking off. about there was a there was a big terrorist scare in around 2005 on, in the airport. Glasgow. I can't remember. I have to, so I have. Yeah, it was where you you couldn't take water onto flights anymore, and I can't remember what I can't remember whether there was a bomb or. The shoe, but yeah, the shoe bomber in two thousand five, um, and we were, we were supposed to be going to Oslo, uh, and we did go to Oslo, and but we were supposed to get a flight that was cancelled because this happened, this terrorist thing. So instead, they put us on the Eurostar for free, and then we had to get a flight from Paris. I love how uh, in the lo- we were just there trying to remember all the terrorist attacks <laughs> of the last ten years. Go Lockerbie, <laughs> shoe bomber. What you shoe bomber, Lockerbie. <laughs> So we ended up on the Eurostar, free, and they said you'll get a free first-class meal to make up for the inconvenience. And we, I, I thought, to be honest, I thought, well, great, they've, they've done very well in this situation. Obviously, there's a lot of trouble going on, and they're doing their best. Right. We got on the Eurostar. After about half an hour, this voice said, ladies and gentlemen, we're very sorry, but we can't now provide the free first-class meal. There's been, obviously, lots of last-minute moving of things around. Has everyone now, said, yes, we now I want a first-class <laughs> meal? <laughs> we now we can't didn't do see that. this happening. And I think, I mean, we were all upset. We were all like, oh, it means we can't eat now. Um, but I think my response was like, well, there's been this big terrorist scare. Obviously, things are going to be 
be tricky. My dad was livid, right? My dad was absolutely livid. And he marched me up to the, to the buffet car and he picked up two pies. And he went to the, uh, he went to the, the counter and said, um, I'm not paying for these pies. And they went, <laughs> sorry? And he said, these pies... These are my these are my pies and I'm not paying for it. My snail is starving. <laughs> yeah, he said, "What do you mean?" He said, "We were entitled to a free first class meal, and uh, I'm going to take advantage of that, and I won't be paying for these pies." And then uh, she said, "Oh well, I don't know what to do." And so he said, "Jos, go and sit down." So I went back to my seat, and then about ten minutes later, he just came back down the tray, being like, "I have acquired these pies," <laughs> really loudly to everyone on the carriage. He was like, "These are my pies." <laughs> and, uh, I won't be made to pay for the pie to which I'm entitled. And then he sat down with me and was like, eat your pie. (laughs) (laughs) He's great. He's a good guy, my dad. Well, I've met your dad. He's lovely. He's a lovely guy. He came to that. He came to the 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 weirdo Halloween Halloween night that we did. Yeah, That was fun. But he's, he comes to a lot of your stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, he's good he's, like that. He seems really lovely. Yeah, he's good. My folks have ever seen me do one thing. It was that hook it's thing hook. last... Yeah, that was really sweet. Yeah, I liked uh, that. Ridiculously supportive, but they're lucky, aren't they? Yeah. They're good lucky. parents. I don't know. Do you, reckon, do you think we'd be good parents? I think we'd be interesting parents. <laughs> I don't mean like us two. <laughs> 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 uh, gay dads. <laughs> Imagine. I think if, <laughs> if you and I... If you and I raised a child together, I think it would be the most maladjusted child around. Oh I think my our, like, god! Both both of us All have right, specific let's flaws. Go, let's take this I think both of us. Walk. I think both of us have specific flaws that if we had, a, <laughs> a, if we had a, a mother there. A, no, a, a, there's, no mother, would, yeah, no, there's no mother, George. There's no mother. What I'm saying is, if if we had a mother there who could temp, temper out those flaws, that would be all right. But I think our <laughs> flaws are sort of opposites. So go any on, child then. we raise together. We just end up. Let's with, come with the worst on. Let's talk. Both let's of us. talk it through. Let's talk it. Let's edit out all my shit about my dad, <laughs> and we'll talk. Right. Okay. We've got a chuck. What color is it? <laughs> How tall is it? White. It's white. It's, white. it's called Neve. Because I assumed we were adopting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I assumed we were adopting, but I think if if we if we were to adopt, so we've uh, adopted a white kid. Yeah. Aryan Neve. or slightly French. Dark haired. Dark, so it looks like it's a trickle or boy. <laughs> We've adopted a little trickle or boy. Girl, I think it should be a daughter. You, do you think? Right, I'd rather. We could, I'd rather we, have I reckon a daughter we could than a just son. about raise a boy. We <laughs> we should not be allowed to raise a woman. I mean, I could just about raise a daughter if there's a woman there, or yeah. if you're not there. <laughs> Right, I can, like I could be trusted. I because because I'm a youth worker. I could be a good dad. But yeah. if it, if there's two of us, and I see this is a platonic parenthood, right? Uh, we that oh, God, let's talk it. For, all right. So you're so okay. So so it's a little white French girl, Irish. A little white <laughs> Irish girl. Does she remain Irish throughout her upbringing with us? <laughs> Where are we raising her? Um, SW4. Where's that? It's where I live. I was thinking Wimbledon. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, 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 it's Clapham, Clapham it? Brixton. Clapham is Brixton, that SW17? Yeah. SW17 is Tooting. That's where I used to live. Well, then what's SW1? Well, it's Wimbledon. It's Wimbledon. Let's raise her at Wimbledon. Okay, Wimbledon. Let's comment. raise a tennis pro. <laughs> Let's send her off to Barcelona when she's 15. Uh, 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 it doesn't matter, doesn't matter what I've... Wimbledon is. <laughs> so we're raising a... What, so we're raising a little Irish... Girl. Darkered Raven. White girl. <laughs> White girl. <laughs> Called Neve. Which is N I A M H, which I love. The fact that it's that. <laughs> you are definitely the bitch. <laughs> which I love. <laughs> so, so so we're given so well I I don't know how I feel about this. But then do you know what? This is the most ironically, this really sounds like a real unplanned parent. <laughs> right, okay. So we're raising a little Irish. Uh, Raven of a girl called yeah. Neve, uh, who is how old when we acquire her? <laughs> four. A doctor? She's four. Because the first four years, you're not missing anything. Do you know what? There's a lot of parents who wouldn't tell you that. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so, we've been, so, so, so you, we, we have suddenly adopted a four-year-old Irish girl. <laughs> Uh, I, have, I have a recurring... We're not even gay parents. We're just two I guys want... who think it might be a fun project. Huh? Who's the third guy? It can't be John. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, 
two men, I, and a, two men and a four-year-old. I have a recurring. It's, t- it's, t- it's not a baby. It's two a men and a four-year-old. I have a recurring fantasy about a child. Uh, <laughs> oh, let's, quali- <laughs> let's qualify <laughs> that very quickly. I, I, because I, I, I always used to, like we were talking about last week. I always project myself into these imagined sort of things where I'm a, a divorced father. I used to have. Yeah, I I'd, have, I'd have a country. I'd, I'd have a country house, and the Neve would be playing outside. What did the wife get? <laughs> She's in a flat somewhere. <laughs> She's in Peckham. Uh, and Neve, Neve will be outside playing in the garden. <laughs> and then I have an image where I, ju- I step out onto the veranda. I'm in a full suit and tie. Because that's, that's what... Please that's let what it be... A, you're looking like Colonel Sanders at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Sex and Ranch. I just open the door and I'm in my full suit and tie. And I go, It's Kentucky, Neve. it's not Texan. Oh, yeah, Kentucky, sorry. I go, Neve, there's a storm coming. Get inside. <laughs> 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 And then, <laughs> cru- <laughs> crucially, the, 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 the crucial point of this fantasy is that I, go, I then go back inside, I shut the door behind me, I wait for her to come in. I don't, I don't, so I shut the door, I shut the door behind me, I go, Neve, there's a storm coming, get inside, shut the door, go back to my reading. She finishes. In your suit. <laughs> she finishes playing whatever she's doing, and then she comes in, lets herself in, goes upstairs. I go, dinner will be later. Probably. Where did We've got you, a maid. Where were we raising? Yeah, I forget. SW4. Wimbledon. <laughs> no, where did you say? SW7, it was SW1 in the end, wasn't it? No, where, was you, where did I you say? I said SW4, well, you just, just because ra- it would mean I wouldn't have to move. But, so that is Brixton? Yeah, well, it's in Acre Lane, in between Clapham and Brixton. So now we know where you live. <laughs> right. So, okay. Why have I just gone along with this? <laughs> I've just got to... What else? Yeah, what you, else? you all gladly moved from Barking. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So I've now got a four-year-old Irish girl. I'm and living in Brixton, in Brixton, and a flat in Brixton with a. Uh, for some reason, I don't know. I just imagined a door uh, that 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 leads you like you'd fall down the flats. It's the outside because I keep ima- I, I just keep imagining like the um, like the cartoon door that like, you know. Yeah, that goes nowhere. And that's how we lose. <laughs> but, uh, there's a little cat flat. <laughs> Uh, okay, so there's so we've got so oh, this is so, I don't know why am I I'm really getting stressed out. <laughs> <this. laughs> <No, you're probably laughs> like, I'm getting so tormenting stressed. yourself. Um, okay, so how can we stop her being a slut? <laughs> that is my one. I know. Look, let's be honest, right? Mo- for every <laughs> no, this is for, this is let's be let's be honest, right? Mm. Every guy you're thinking about raising a son. What do you think about? Uh, Teach it respect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Teach it. Yeah, SW1 is Chelsea. Oh. SW1's SW1 Chelsea, is mate. Chelsea, apparently. All right, so... Uh, I say, uh, if I'm raising a son, teach it manners. If I'm raising a girl, make her pretty. Make her pretty. Make her pretty. It's a, it's you really, no, you are, you are definitely the bitch in this relationship. I love it. Make her pretty. Oh, my God. Right. It sounds like you're buying all her clothes, man. Yeah. Fair enough. Mini Bowden. Mini Bowden. That's where I'd go. I'd go to Mini Bowden. <laughs> well, apparently you know where to go. Because <laughs> I would just take it to Oxford Street. I think if I had a child, and lose I would, if I had a child, <laughs> I wouldn't buy it little shoes. You know, the tiny shoes that you buy for babies. I wouldn't buy those because she's going to grow out of them. <laughs> you're very, but very quickly, very how quickly. How big are the shoes you're buying? Them? Well, you know those tiny little shoes that you no, get for babies. How big are the shoes you're buying? Oh, she's four. Well, she's going to be in a pram. Or unless we're going to do oh, that yes, thing with the feet, where we keep keep her feet small, <laughs> keep her feet small, and then put rings around her neck. I just make her, she's a, got a long neck and short I, I feet. I just buy her adult sized welly boots. Growing <laughs> 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 she, she peek around the top. You of can it take these around. off on your wedding day when you're very five. No, because okay, so I was thinking that if it was a boy, mm. I would. I'm not saying he has to be a good sports fan, but he can't be physically inept unless he is. <laughs> In which case, I would love him like anyone else. I'm physically inept. I had my okay. Can I you tell know you? No, that's not what I meant. But thank you. In year, in year nine, in year I nine, didn't think that my uh, I had a I had a, a my school report for PE from Mr. Bowman. 
said, um, Jos's cheerful enthusiasm unfortunately cannot disguise his difficulty in acquiring or applying any practical skills whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> that was in PE. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was physically... Did you tell him about the dancing tree? When Didn't tell him about that. <laughs> Are we going to make... A four-year-old should already... No. Oh yeah. What can a four four year old do? Talk, walk, talk, walk. Eat. We want a walkie talkie child, please. <laughs> learning to read. Learning to read. They're learning at that stage. You give them the to... Oxford reading tree with Biff and Kipper. You should find it really easy Biff to learn Chipper. a language at that age. Biff and Kipper and Chip. We'd make a teach make a teach a language. <laughs> if we can make her learn a language, what is it gonna be? Mandarin's gonna be very useful to her. We'll yeah. make her watch like uh Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. <laughs> Oh boy, that's Korean. In, what's it? Infernal Affairs, or whatever it is. Make her watch all the fight films. I definitely. I think this is what I was going to say. She doesn't have to be a sports fan, but she does have to have a black belt in something. <laughs> Seriously, she's got to have a black belt. Because one of my chief regrets. America. One of my. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a black belt in America. <laughs> what? This is, so you. You can teach her. You can teach her how to dress and make her pretty. And please, <laughs> you'll be, you'll be and I am going to America develop and my own martial art called America. And but I am looking forward to nothing. I'm sorry, I'm getting up for this. I'm looking because I got out of the I'm looking forward to nothing more. All right, you stand up. Right. Right, I know that you can't hear this, but I just want to act it out for my own self. Now, you stand behind the desk, okay. right? Now, I want you to do that. Do the thing with that, where you're punching your arms. Stand there behind the desk, punching the arms. All right, for the audio thing, I am now walking back and forth across it with my arms behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> I want to live that moment of t- <laughs> teaching my daughter. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> you <laughs> I want to live that moment every day for years. I mainly just try and teach her to respect men. To respect men? Yeah, I think there's not enough respect for men. I would want to... Uh, not enough respect for men. To be honest, mate, you're not going about it very well with this. <laughs> way. So I you're going to take... I, I got a text yesterday saying, why can't more men be like you? I think I'm, I think I'm a good role model. Who for, is that for from, John? <laughs> yeah. I say okay. a text. He, so he, we'll, we'll he got to wrap to it up me. soon. All right, I say cool. a text. He actually turns to me uh, in the middle so of Ross and just, just said so that. So to end with this, I'm going to teach my daughter my own martial art. I'm going to make her pretty. Look, okay. Let's go to mini no, I just want to be honest, suppose, because I probably sounded awful saying this. Like, if you do... <laughs> I don't want my daughter to be a female version of me, Right? I specifically want I don't mine want, to be a female what I want is, of me. Well, I don't really want that. She probably will Just be, because right? I'd be fascinated to see what that would be like. I would I would like, because I think, apart from me, she's going to be intelligent, right? Mm. She's going to be uh, pretty, whatever. She's gonna, I hope she is pretty. I don't want her to be like... She, she's got real snoz. She's got everything but snoz, and then she keeps asking for surgery. And then uh, we end up having counselling about it. And <laughs> <laughs> But I would like it to have some sort of physical skill. Mm. <laughs> I don't mean like carpentry or whatever. I mean like she like she's got a, she's she's better at America than I am. <laughs> by the by People by the end it's me doing the punching the while she's walking back and forth. Across. Um, but when I but I would yeah she wanted to respect me. But I would like her to have the self respect. Yeah, is more important, important. than res- res- respect. They're both others. important. You've got to respect everyone. Respect, yes, not to res- but not respect to in the Muppets. Beliefs. In the Muppets, Jason Siegel says, you always believe in other people, but that's easy. And sooner or later, you have to believe in yourself, because that's what growing up is. And then the Muppets just look at each other, and then they look back at him going, you fucking retarded. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the What Not podcast. Uh, we're on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube, so listen to us there. And please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thank you for listening, uh, and I hope you have a beautiful day wherever you are. <laughs>